Um, well, it was hard because I, I started having reoccurring dreams of it. I kept thinking to myself, okay, if I pretend it didn't happen and I don't think about it, then it'll make it go away. And it didn't. And um, the dreams ended up turning into flashbacks. And every time I'd smell a cologne that was similar to the one he'd wear and things, it would bring it back. And that's where I really started thinking, okay, I'm going nuts. <laughs> there really is something wrong with me. And I couldn't figure out why I couldn't control this, why I couldn't make these things go away and pretend they didn't happen. And um, the first person I actually told is my husband when we were dating one night. I guess it just all bubbled up. I just couldn't hold it in any longer. And um, he had me go talk to my counselor. and. I did not want to go. <laughs> I kept thinking of every excuse not to go because I kept thinking she's going to think it was me. She's going to say, yeah, that's because you did this or you wore these clothes or you, you know. And I just, I didn't want somebody to blame me for it. And it was a very long session with a lot of tears and I was surprised she could understand what I was saying because <laughs> I was crying so hard. But it was scary because I felt like it was going to bring me back. I was going to be back in his home. We were going to be back where the pornography was around, and we were always afraid. But I didn't go back. I kind of in my head did, but I could physically tell myself, OK, I'm an adult now. I don't have to go back. I can go back to my own home. And that, that helped a lot. Well, when I, when I told him, he was sitting there telling me, you know, you're, you're not crazy you're not it's it's okay and um, he just basically helped me and let me cry and just let me say what I had needed to say for so long without putting me down without judging me it was just okay um, I'm just here to listen there was nothing bouncing back just I love you and I'm here to listen and that helped a lot I think that was pretty much what I needed. I could feel it building up, and I knew he knew things were going on because he was asking questions. Um, he had seen that I had slit my wrists, and he was asking me to go get stitches and things, and I, I wouldn't do it. And He knew there was something wrong, but the fact that he was just there at the time willing to listen to what was wrong and not judge me and not judge my dad because I still get defensive. He's my dad. I still love him despite everything. And I don't know, um, the one thing that, with me personally, I was glad didn't happen was I, I was always afraid the police would all come, and they'd write this big report, and, you know, he, my dad would be, you know, um, subpoenaed to court and all this stuff, and I was very upfront with my counselor and stuff that I, I could not handle that. I couldn't, to this day, I don't think I could go before a judge and say, yeah, this is what he did, punish him, because I still love him because I know there's still hope for him, and I don't think it was really him there. He, he's sick. And I don't think, despite everything, jail time or anything like that would make it go away. He needs professional help. I think if he didn't get that and he was put in like jail or, or something, um, he would get worse. It would just eat him alive because he wouldn't have it there to constantly feed him. that once it's out, it's better. It, it really does feel better, even if it's just one person. It doesn't have to go out to the world. It doesn't have to be announced on TV. But inside, it feels a lot better to know that, OK, I don't have to be the strong one all the time holding it in. I don't have to protect them all the time. I, it's OK to take care of you. It's OK to feel OK about yourself and, and feel OK to talk. You're not really hiding it. People see it. it. When you're in the middle of it, you think, OK, nobody else in the world knows what he's doing. Nobody else knows what's happening in our home, but they see it. And a lot of people want to help. They just don't know how to help you. So sometimes you got to be the one to say, I need a little help. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, I knew that was going on. I knew something was wrong. But they just didn't know how to approach you 